Brian. Well, in just under an hour, we will know if Missouri Governor Mike Parson will issue a statewide stay at home order to contain COVID-19. The governor issued a two week order restricting gatherings to groups of 10 or fewer people. That was back on March 23rd. We're going to carry that announcement live on KNBC 9 News at 5 o'clock tonight. Missouri is one of the last states in the country without a statewide stay at home order. Some Missouri cities and counties have adopted the order. Investigative reporter Matt Fleener takes us to one that has not. Most Missourians are under a stay at home order in their counties and cities, but there are some mainly in rural areas that have yet to order one, even as the calls for a statewide order have grown. In DeKalb County, Missouri, like most other places, the hardware store is still open. The grocery too, but more than 12,000 people in this county are not living under a stay at home order. Still, restaurants are closed. The library too. No workouts at the gym either. So far in our area, in our Tri-County Health area, we've had one reported case. I Presiding Commissioner today. Kyle Carroll so far has not called for a stay at home order for DeKalb County. I'm not sure what would actually change from what's already in place. The governor says stay at home, not a stay at home order, but that's a recommendation. The CDC is saying that and we say that. What, what does that actually change? People have been so uh, contagious and it's just spread so rapidly. The Tri-County yeah, Health yeah. Administrator uh, says counties like Gentry and Worth counties bordering DeKalb have issued stay-at-home orders. She's recommended DeKalb issue one as well. Hopefully it would just cut, cut down on everybody uh, spreading the, the virus. Meanwhile, the presiding commissioner says he's weighing all the facts. And right now we're, we're good, but you know that can change. In DeKalb County, Matt Fleener, KNBC 9 News. Missouri's neighboring states of Nebraska, Iowa, and Arkansas also have no statewide stay at home orders as of right now. Coronavirus cases continue to rise. Missouri now has reached 2100 and you can see that's a huge jump from last week. The state has seen 19 deaths. Now here's the trend in Kansas where there have also been 620 cases and 17 deaths. Wyandotte County is opening a new COVID-19 testing site. It is only though for people who live in that county. The clinic will be at a trailer near Barnett and Ann Avenue in Kansas City, Kansas. It's going to be open Monday, Wednesday and Friday afternoons from 2 to 5. Residents must make an appointment ahead of time. People showing symptoms are going to get priority testing. The unified government's medical director says this will give them a better picture of what they are dealing with. Kansas City is on the front lines trying to find a vaccine for COVID-19. The Center for Pharmaceutical Research is among the first sites conducting a phase one clinical trial. Today, some of the very first local patients are being screened. If they're cleared, they will receive the experimental vaccine early next week. The FDA is fast tracking this process. We talked to the principal investigator. I've done 800 clinical trials in the last 34 years and 100 vaccine trials. This is by far, to me, the most important uh, trial that we've done ever uh, with what's going on in the world right now. Uh, the Center for Pharmaceutical Research is looking for 30 healthy adults. And if you would like to know more, Kelly Ackerman has more just posted on her KNBC Facebook page. St. Luke's Health System is now able to process COVID-19 tests in-house. This allows patients and medical workers to see the results faster. Until now, they'd been waiting a couple of days to get results. The hospital system says it's caring for 25 patients who've tested positive for COVID-19. Johnson County is Kansas's most populous county. It is also the state's most, uh, it's the county rather, with uh, the most COVID-19 cases. KMBC 9's Michael Mahoney talked with the Advent Health Center's chief medical officer about their fight against this virus. The Advent Health Center, formerly known to many as the Shawnee Mission Health Center, is one of the largest hospitals in Johnson County. The chief medical officer, Dr. Larry Bott, says that they have 20 COVID-19 cases in their ICU and that they have another 12 patients that are also in ICU and they are waiting for testing results to come back for those folks. The ICU unit has been separated so that the COVID-19 patients are away from the others. That's sort of standard procedure. He also says that the number of people that they have there has been holding steady for about the last five days. He hopes that that's a good sign, but he doesn't rule out a surge. They've been rotating doctors and nurses in and out of their ICU unit, and I asked the doctor to tell me what it was like for those folks working in ICU with the COVID-19 patients. The morale is, is still good. They, they are, as I said, they, 
they've impressed me with the fact that they've been able to to uh, um, uh, come to work every day and and give the the, the care that uh, the patients need uh, in that setting, uh, uh, despite the, the anxiety and the, and the fears. According to the Johnson County Health Department, as of this morning, 172 COVID-19 cases in Johnson County. That is just about a third of the entire cases for the state of Kansas. Michael Mahoney, KMBC 9 News. And Dr. Abad says that they have bed space. That's because so many elective surgeries and other procedures have been postponed. The University of Kansas Health System is claiming a small victory. The hospital is treating 33 COVID-19 patients. That's actually down from 36 just yesterday. However, doctors say the curve is not flattened yet and there is still work to be done. Medical students at the University of Kansas will be able to graduate early to join the fight against COVID-19. Leaders say 52 senior medical students who have already met graduation requirements are signed up for the Kansas Pandemic Volunteer Healthcare Workforce. Students will receive special permits to work with doctors. Their help is especially needed in those rural hospitals already dealing with a shortage of healthcare workers. More changes coming up at Children's Mercy. Urgent care centers are changing their hours of operation. As of today, the hours are noon to 6 p.m. seven days a week. All patients should check in online to reserve their spot and reduce time spent in the waiting room. The coronavirus pandemic reaches a new milestone. The death toll has topped 6,000 in the U.S. KBC 9's Sally Kidd is in Washington as the White House is increasing more protections for President Donald Trump. Haley, the White House now says anyone who will be in close proximity to the president will first be given a rapid COVID-19 test starting today. The White House ramping up protections, requiring testing of anyone who comes near the president or vice president. If anybody wants to be tested, we'll test you. Governors in all but 11 states have issued statewide stay at home orders, and now some are suggesting residents wear face coverings as the federal government weighs its own guidance on masks. You can wear a bandana or a scarf or a simple cloth face covering when you're out. In New York, the New England Patriots delivered 300,000 N95 masks to the Javits Center now being used to treat COVID-19 patients. The governor ordering the redistribution of excess ventilators from upstate hospitals to those overwhelmed with critical patients. Several hundred could represent several hundred lives. So am I willing to deploy the National Guard and inconvenience people for several, several hundred lives? You're damn right I am. Senator Cory Gardner asking an inspector general to investigate alleged mismanagement of the strategic national stockpile as hospitals warn they're running low on critical supplies and more states report a surge in cases. We simply don't know just how bad things are going to get or exactly how long this is going to last. Well, the Trump administration overnight changed its description of the strategic national stockpile. The president and his team clarifying their position that it is only a short term backup supply for states to use. In Washington, Sally Kidd, KNBC 9 News. And with this news, stocks closed lower on Wall Street. The Dow closed down 361 points. The S&P closed down 1.5%. 40 Delta planes are now parked on a runway out at KCI. News Chopper 9 flew over the airport, and as you can see, it has become essentially a parking lot for airplanes. Right now, thousands of flights are canceled because of the coronavirus. A Peace Corps worker is back in the U.S. after working in Ukraine. KNBC 9's Lara Moritz joins us live after talking to her. And Lara, she was planning to be in Ukraine a bit longer. 23-year-old Emma Givens was planning on being in Ukraine until October of this year. And she told me she had heard about the coronavirus, but it seemed like this far away virus that would never affect her or the small town she was serving. Then what seemed surreal became a reality when she was told to evacuate and get home immediately. But she's kept her sense of humor about it. Once we got to the capital, we were still there until Thursday because the border shut down, flights were rescheduled. Um, so we ended up taking a chartered flight out of Ukraine, which is just kind of wild. I feel like that entire story will be like my party trick. Like, oh, I had a police escort to a chartered flight out of a closed border country. 
I mean, what a conversation starter. She really is a delight to talk to. You'll hear more from her tonight at 6. She is in quarantine in Kansas City. This is her 13th day. Tomorrow, she'll be able to finally be reunited with her parents. She has been symptom-free. Haley?